So if you're watching on YouTube, you missed the very opening of the show, which would have been a song called Hey Mambo, Mambo Italiano. And there's a reason for that, because today we're going to walk down memory lane with Professor Rambo. Yep, we're going to walk down, we're going to go way back in memory lane, like past his own chronological results. He he had a little DNA test done recently. I can test the results. <laughs> the results. <laughs> yep. Ah, uh, yes. What's up, Bodie? Bodie's here too. So he had a little uh, DNA test. And remember, folks, this is Mr. Greek, Mr. Greece, Mr. Greek, Greece, Eastern Orthodox Greek food. Just need to drive that point home. So. We walked down DNA memory lane. And why don't you tell us, why don't you, starting from the smallest percentage, what do you got in you there, buddy? I don't want to go, go into, into everything. everything but, but what do you got in there, buddy? There's some surprises. There's some surprises. <laughs> go ahead. Nigerian. Nigerian, how much? 1%? 1%. 1% Nigerian. All right. All right. What what's the next one up? Jew. 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 How much? Three percent. Three percent. Three percent. We're working our way up. What's 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 at five percent? I think you have something that's five percent. What is that? <laughs> Your, Your mama. mama. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Your five percent. Come on. What is it? Five Come on. It's five percent Greek. <laughs> My, 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 my Polish, Polish brother-in-law is 12% Greek. <laughs> his Polish brother-in-law is more Greek than he is. You're, what is it, 26% uh, Persian? Asiatic. Persian? Asiatic, Persian? No, no, Persian. Persian. Somewhere per from, from like <laughs> Western Asia. But coming yeah. in at 52%. Wait, wait, wait. wait. The Let's the have it. Wait, wait. Go Sardinian, ahead. 12%. Sardinian, 12%. Sardinian. 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 I, mean, I, I see the islands. islands but, but, yeah. Um, like like that, that. Neolithic Sardinian, okay? So he's yeah, like yeah, primitive like, over here. He's not cool like, like, like me. Like a we have an echo going on, Mr. Mr. Liberty Principal? So, so Neolithic, Neolithic, you know, you know the, the uh, what do you call, call them? them? Megalithic, Megalithic structure builder, Sardinian. Oh. Uh, yeah. Original Europeans. Okay. Okay, but I need to know. See, every time I think of Nigerian, I think of that Woody Allen movie, Everything You Wanted to Learn About Sex, where the sperms are getting ready to launch with their like parachutes, and there's that one <laughs> black guy in there, right? Yeah. And it's like, and they're like, "How'd you get in here?" He's like, "I don't know." I don't know. <laughs> it's like, How did I don't know. There? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so why don't you tell everybody what 52% is? Italian. That's right. 52% Italian. Where is that? Oh, man. I got to get it. Oh, well, there's a Mambo Italiano remix. I got to get on that. I gotta get on the Mambo Italiano remix. Oh, it's the hip hop remix. Come on, here we go. Test the results because Italy was colonized by Greeks. No one can hear that. Oh. Yeah. No one can hear that. Yeah, they can hear it. They can. Yeah, they can hear it. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the warm up. <laughs> that is the, the warm up. It's colonized by Greeks. Yeah. So the, the way they differentiate between Greeks and Italians is not correct. I'm going to do a different test. I'm You're going to do it. You know, he's going to send his his he's going to send his test to uh, a Greek authorities. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> we'll right. sure that the outcome is as 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 he wishes that it would be so let's get to the show we're gonna get we're gonna play things a little bit 
and uh, out of order here because we're going to start our top story so, is not a gun story. So uh, have I made you obsessed with turkey now? Is is that my fault? No, it's Rahava's fault. Uh, okay, good. It's the fault of Rahava. So we'll play our bump here. Decency. What are the stories that more fully reveal the unfolding reality of power at a global level? Well, that's what iWorld is for. So get ready to look behind the global curtain to see who's really pulling the levers. All right. So who's really pulling the levers? It's it's the Turk Reich. The Turk Reich. Ooh, the Turk is Reich. Response. That's that's what I'm calling them. I'm going with the Turk Reich. So we have we have two stories here. Well, really three, but one has two stories contained in it. And one is just well, it shows what's happening here. I mean, you know what? I'm going to start with the Greek prime minister calls Turkey an aggressive neighbor at Davos. So Greek Prime Minister Alexei Tsipri, Tsipras, how do you say that? Never mind. Tsipras. I, I need could a, also call him Kami Bitch. I was wondering, your wife is Greek, right? Could you Maybe. get her? Because I want to know how you pronounce this Greek name. I need a Greek person. <laughs> Just call him Kami Bitch. Kami! Kami Bish! Kami Bish! Said on Wednesday, his European partners couldn't always appreciate the challenges of living with an aggressive neighbor such as Turkey. Uh, remarks reflecting the strained ties between the two NATO partners. Mm -hmm. Cyprus was speaking at the World Economic Forum in Davos in a discussion about stabilizing the Mediterranean and addressing the migration crisis. So that look, you, you tell me, what does that mean that you're going to call Turkey an aggressive neighbor right there on literally on the world stage with all the world oh. leaders watching? Oh, he's calling them out. Look, it's, it, it's pretty simple. The All of the neighbors of the remnants of the Ottoman Empire are constantly in peril because when the Turks go to town, they try to eradicate you because the problem is that the Turks are primarily the ancestors of the people who converted to Islam in Asia Minor. And as those people discover that they're Greeks and Assyrians and Armenians and Persiatics and Kurds and Arabs and Slavs, they start to identify with those groups. So how would you fit in? I am a mixture of the <laughs> empires that have gone through those lands. Which is those typical. people on the uh, on the uh, the Anatolian coast, they're they're more Greek than you. Just oh, most, throw that, that out. It may, that may very well be true, <laughs> genetically, but culturally. Ah, I'm going to drive this thing. into the ground, you know that. So, so... The Turks have huge insecurities because they know that everybody wants their land back. The Armenians want their territories back. The Arabs and the Kurds and the Persians and the Georgians want their lands back. The Assyrians want their lands back. The Greeks want their lands back. Everybody wants their territory back, their, their indigenous lands. And the Turks know that at least their culture came there from Central Asia and is it's not a indigenous group in that part of the world. And in order to settle there, they had to murder the indigenous groups and forcibly convert them. Well, so you're giving the whole Turkish history here, not just yeah. going to stick so, with the narrow, like, well, what's going on now. Thing. So Tsipras now um, is calling them out. He has to because their behavior in the Aegean – their behavior in Syria is uh, guided primarily by one individual. See, the Turks had a really good uh, militaristic state 20 years ago where the military and the government worked together to advance their country's interests. Well, Erdogan has crushed the military's influence in politics and, and his own military. 
Yeah, and he's going at it alone based on his ideology. And his ideology is to recreate the Ottoman Empire. And here you have it. They keep uh, having incursions in Greek territorial airspace and uh, territorial yeah, let's, waters. Let, let's get to the, our, our second story that, that, that ties the into... On in Syria. I mean, but the, the title of this show is Showdown in the Aegean. The Turk problem. I should have said the Turk Reich problem. Just went all out. Oh. And I'll get in a, a little bit. I'll tell you why I'm calling them the Turk Reich. I definitely, I'm not Greek, so I don't have that that Greek vested interest in Turkey. I have a different vested interest in Turkey. As, as now, you being Italian, you don't have that Greek vested interest. I don't. Oh. I can look at this impartially, actually. <laughs> yes, you can look at this impartially. So, so it appears that the Turks are island grabbing in the Aegean. They have uh, to. Well, actually, it's islet grabbing because they're not quite up right. to the level of grabbing islands quite yet. Though this is the shoelace principle, but maybe we'll right. talk about that in a little bit. So what they're doing is they're staking claims to two islets that belong to Greece. So they released this statement. Uh, this is from Hurriyet Daily. And Hurriyet Hur Daily is a pro... Hurriyet. Hur how is it pronounced? Hurriyet. Hurriyet. Okay, Hurriyet. Hurriyet. The Turkish Coast Guard blocked Greece's defense minister from approaching a pair of disputed islets in the Aegean Sea, according to Turkey's interior ministry. I'm reading from them. This, these aren't my words. Coast Guard officials warned off Panos Kamenos. Could you get your wife and see if I pronounce that right? Panos Kamenos. Okay. Wow. You're pretty good at Greek for being Italian. That's nice. So he was he was heading to the Kardak Islets in an assault boat to lay a wreath there for Greek military personnel, blah, blah, blah. Following the warning, the Greek boat left Turkey's territorial waters without further incident. In a statement, now this is what really gets me, Turkish Interior Minister blah, blah, blah said the Coast Guard units did what was necessary. <laughs> but wait. There's another side to the story. And this is from Ekathamarini. Ekathamarini? Ekathamarini? The Daily. What is it? E. Kathimerini. E. Kathimerini. Wow. The, the you really daily. know your Greek. It's amazing. Mm. That is that's amazing. Do you have like Greek friends growing up? I <laughs> did. <stop>. A few. <laughs> A few. <laughs> so this is their headline. And some Greeks. And some Jewish friends, too. Shalom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So Greece rebuffs Turkish reports on Imaya wreath ceremony. The Hellenic Navy general staff has dismissed Turkey media reports that Turkey's Coast Guard on Sunday prevented Defense Minister What's-His-Face from throwing a wreath into the sea off the Emea Islets on the, in the eastern Aegean where a Greek military helicopter crashed in 1996, blah, blah, blah. In a written statement on Monday, the Hellenic Navy said the claim by the Turkish Interior Ministry quoted by the state-run Anadolu Agency had nothing to do with the reality and that the gunboat carrying blah, blah, blah at the spot, despite the attempt, the attempt by Turkish Coast Guard patrol boats to prevent it from doing so, it didn't happen. They said the report is a lie. <laughs> so... Yeah, you know. So I have when to I... correct you on something. You said oh, that no. there's a couple of islets. There's actually like 28 islets, and some of them are like very close to the island of Crete, which is nowhere near Turkey. That they're claiming, it, it's not just one or two islands or islets. Oh no, I'm just talking about this incident. I yeah. know they're claiming a lot so, more than a couple of islets. So they're they're going back on the Luzon Treaty. And they want to. Will you tell the studio with, audience what the Lausanne Treaty is? The Lausanne Treaty is uh, a treaty that was signed uh, sometime shortly after World War One, <clears throat> that defined the territories between. Actually, it might have been before World War One. That may have existed. I'm stumped now. It, it oh, happened a long uh, time ago. Oh, wait, in hold the early on, hold 20th on. Century. 
I have a I have a breaking news question. Breaking news question from John Smith, and I think it's very important. Uh, and you're gonna have to put on your Greek hat. If Russia invaded Turkey from the rear, do you think Greece would help? <laughs> They have olive oil, right? So we would contribute our olive oil, yes. <laughs> they would contribute their olive oil. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. We that was breaking breaking news. We would want to lubricate the situation. <laughs> right. Make it easier for that rear right, end. For entry. The Russian, yes. Okay, anyway, so Lausanne Treaty. The Lausanne Treaty uh was signed in the early twentieth century. And uh, it pretty much delineates the the boundaries between Greece and Turkey and between Turkey and many of its other neighbors as well. Um, and so by renegotiating the Lausanne Treaty, they can renegotiate the borders between themselves and Iraq and Syria. And seeing how they've pushed into Syria recently to create a territorial safe zone to re- patriate the Syrian refugees that don't belong in that territory, they are essentially carving out a piece of northern Syria for themselves. The Turks don't typically give back territory that they've taken. Cyprus not, is a not unless you force them out force with them. some guns. Correct. Correct. So um, <clears throat> they're making, they're trying to establish precedent in the Aegean to question Greece's sovereignty over territory, just like they're, question, they're going to start questioning sovereignty of parts of northern Syria, northern Iraq. And they'll just keep going. Let's correct. tell everybody about the shoelaces. So okay. you understand so, how Turkey, how the Turk Reich is working. Go ahead. So as a little boy, my grandmother shared a story with me. She said, never give a Turk your shoelace. I was like, what? That is the strangest thing you have ever said to me. What are you talking about? And it was in reference to some political development in the news that we were watching at home from the I, old I, By the way, I do want to interject here. I got nothing, no, I got no issue with individual Turks. But Correct. anyway, go ahead. Neither do I. And actually, the ones that I've met, mm -hmm. I have found to be very lovely people, easy to get along with. Um, and with a lot of similarities to Greece. But that's a whole other issue. But now you um, can't relate to them at all. <laughs> no, because I'm Italian. Yes. So, yes. <clears throat> so she said, never give a Turk your shoelace. And I said, why? She goes, well, because if you, let's say you're in the marketplace and a Turk comes along and says, hey, those shoes are mine. And you say, what, what on earth are you talking about? These shoes are mine. I no, no, you took those from me. Those are my shoes and you have them. And they carry on and create a fuss and there's a crowd that develops and people are sitting around and saying, dude, why'd you take his shoes? I'm like, I'm, I didn't. And at this point, the crowd's 50-50. Half of them believe you, half of them believe him. And he says, well, look, just give me your sh the shoelace of my shoes and all your losing is a shoelace i mean you can live without a shoelace and yeah, we call it even. shoelace it's just a stupid shoelace and we can call it even and you're like and the mob half the mob is like yeah just give him the shoelace man yeah and man let's settle this peace to keep peace all right i can get another shoelace so here take the shoelace are we good are we good it's yeah we're good see everybody he gave me back my shoelace which proves that those shoes are mine Give him back right. my shoes. And by the time right. he's done exactly. with you, you're done, you don't have shoes, you lost your socks, and you're running around the marketplace butt naked because he owns you. Pretty much. Never capitulate to the Turks. Yeah. You're and when we say the Turks, we're talking about the Turkish government. The, the, correct. The, the, the system, especially the in this case, system. the Erdogan, Erdogan uh, Reich, the so Turk Reich. Here's a, here's a prime example. The Turks move into Syria. They tell the Americans, we're serious. The Russians gave us permission to fly through here and we're not backing off. America says, look, we'll meet you halfway. We'll stop arming these Kurds. Okay, are you happy? They're like, yes, yes, just you're, you're, you're going to disarm these Kurds. That's great. Look, great. everyone, they're disarming the Kurds. 
now get out of the rest of the territories. That's the very right. next day they made they escalated. An ultimatum. Pretty much they an made ultimatum. an ultimatum to the United States and escalated. Just like going from the shoelace to the shoe and from the shoe to everything else, they are now escalating there. It is a systemic systemic system, a systemic technique that they use uh, against their rivals. And it's not right. that they're, they're enemies. It's that they see now the Americans as rivals in that part of the world for dominance. And they are hell-bent on recreating yeah. the Ottoman, the Ottoman Empire. Empire. Right. They're, they have imperialistic designs. Now, let me tell you, folks, why it is that the Turks are on my radar, and now I'm calling them the Turk Reich. And by the way, if you go to iState.tv, I started it today, and it's going to continue indefinitely. When I'm referring to the Turks in the news items that I'm doing, I am referring them to, to as the Turk Reich. And why the bees in my bonnet, so to speak, with the Turks is because they are going after... Rahava. I don't know how many of you are paying attention to what Rahava is. Rahava, it's kind of an experiment in statelessness. It's been it's about it's about two million Syrian Kurds that are part of a region in northern Syria called Rahava. And Afrin is is a non-contiguous, non-contiguous part, you call it an enclave. It's kind of an outcrop, but it's part of the Rahavan experiment. And in that is what the Turks are assaulting. So you have this wonderful experiment. It's not perfect. It's There's some things they're doing that I, I don't agree with. But, but still, you have this wonderful experiment with statelessness that's going on. And then the Turks, they're, they're literally invading. So yeah, I I've got some issues with Turk Turk the Turk Reich right now. They're they're not on my on my on my on my most loved list, I'll just say that. And I have no doubt that the Turks intend to well they what what they're really going to be trying to do, I believe is they're they're going to try to take as much land whether it's land and sea territory as they possibly can especially land and sea territory that gives them either a a, a geopolitical advantage when it comes to moving resources around like gas and oil and 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 also to actually claim territory that has gas and oil resources in it and they need well, to they, I'm thinking they need to do this as fast as they possibly can before everybody just says they've had enough. So, so there's there's a couple things that we need to mention. Uh, one of the reasons why this whole confrontation or the civil quote unquote civil war takes place in Syria is because Syria worked out a deal with Iran to move natural gas and oil through Iraq to Syria to the Mediterranean. Now, if if uh, the Turks can take those territories where the primary uh, pipelines are going to move through, now they can negotiate. Now they can get a piece of the action. Now they can possibly hold on to that territory or at least be part of the negotiations. Um, but the other point, point is that not too many weeks ago, we pointed out that they had signed an agreement with Somalia or Sudan? Somalia. Uh, so, about Som an island. No, no Sudan. It was it Sudan. Sudan. In Sudan. the Red Sea. Yeah, and Somalia is to, not signing any deals right now. And they're going to re Somaliland is. Yeah. So they're going to rebuild and build a naval base in the Red Sea? In the Red Sea. Um, yeah. They're going to build uh, a naval a base huge, in the Red Sea on the coast of Sudan. Which is a huge issue for Saudi Arabia and Egypt. So the incidents in the Aegean are not new. Uh, Greece and Turkey almost went to war in, in the late 1990s over those two little islands. And in the end, the United States had to get involved. And that was when the United States still had good relations with Turkey. Now, the United States has its aircraft carrier in the eastern Mediterranean watching Turkey because things are not going well. The Turks are acting very 
Turkish. And that's dangerous. They're acting Ottoman Turkish Turkish is what they're right. doing. So things, yeah, yeah, things are definitely not awesome right now. Uh, just, just if you can, we're about ready to switch gears. We're about ready to switch into full auto mode. Uh, oh, yummy. Give me a, your prognosis for what do you think is going to happen just over the next six months with Turkey, if you had to guess? It's hard to guess because their leadership is so unpredictable. They have gotten rid of their best and brightest from the military and decoupled the military intellect, if you will, from state governance. So that used to be a huge stabilizing force. Right now, I would expect more of the same. A lot of saber rattling and possibly some stupid moves. I, I don't expect them to go to try to go to war with Greece because I, I do think the European Union and NATO would seriously intervene. And if if the Israelis who are cl cl closing the gap with Greeks with the Greeks um, geopolitically uh, were smart, and they seem to be, uh, they would be pushing very hard to isolate Turkey because if they can. Smack around the Greeks. Let me tell you something. They're going to smack around the Israelis. There's no limit to what they're going to be doing. They're constantly probing, constantly Correct. looking for weakness, constantly Correct. looking to expand. So Correct. that's where we'll leave this. We're going to go to a, a brief one-minute break, which is going to allow me to do a promotion for the next segment. Segment, But stick around. Don't go anywhere. It's only a minute. So smoke a cigar, guzzle a beer whatever but stick around for because we'll be back in one minute and we'll be back on the other side with full auto where we're going to be talking seven new guns that de debuted at the shot show we're just going to go over them and have our little comments about what we think what what for we think me, of them there's and we also have some about. news about the military gun oh boy military gun maybe didn't go so well so we'll, we'll see you in, in about a, a minute. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv Ziz Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.iState.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Monday with Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon, featuring Full Auto, iWorld, and iPrepper. And now, here are your hosts, Professor Rambo and Paul Gordon. Hey, we're back. And ne Dude. this, well, Ooh. I'm just going to do the, the full auto bump, all right? I'm just going to do it right now. Just not going to waste time. Here it is. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of full auto news. About guns for gun supporters. Man, I hope that uh, full auto fire didn't trigger anyone. Hope nobody went fetal out there who was listening. Uh, we got some listeners here. We do have listeners and, and viewers. Wow. Viewers and listeners. No we do. We have a number of viewers and listeners. So <laughs> we're going to. I, I, I want to start with the Army story, because we're probably not going to spend a lot of time on this. It seems, uh, as an Italian, you probably are very hurt by this story, because your people, you had the Beretta, and now that's gone. Now it was replaced with the Six Sour. So I still apparently, have the Beretta. I have not replaced it with that shit, <laughs> piece of shit Six Sour. <laughs> 
well, who makes the Sig Sauer anyway? A bunch of Belgians? Uh, I, I don't know. Is it Sig Sauer? Oh, oh a bunch that's of a good Central question. European is that like Swedish sisters? or something? What is the Sig Sauer? Uh-huh. Anybody know? I'm going to check it. I'm going to go. I'm going to see Sig you Sauer. Check that. Sig like Sauer. Where are they? They are. Uh, their headquarters is Newington, New Hampshire. No. Founded in Germany. German. Yeah. Yeah, they're German. German. They're German. Actually, that makes them all right because I got a lot of German in me. I thought I was German, and then I got this test, and guess what? <laughs> I was German. Hey, how'd yours go? <laughs> it, didn't, it, it didn't turn out like that. There's a so, reason why I'm a big fan of Beretta. Let's just say that. All right? Okay. Because they now make you good know. shit. You, you never knew. It's like, I don't know why. I just really love Paredes. Now you know. Dude, dude, this thing, this lasagna stuff? Literally in your blood. And pizza? <laughs> Holy right. shit. Let, oh, I like I love pizza. Right. So this is from The Drive. Uh, Army's new pistols often eject live rounds and don't work well with regular bullets. The U.S. Army's decision to select two versions of six hours, nine, whatever, I'm not going to read all that. Uh, the Pentagon re- recently released a report that shows testing of the M-17 and M-18 handguns exposed a number of significant and persistent deficiencies, including firing accidentally if a shooter dropped the gun. We remember that one. But what you yeah, didn't know was huge. ejecting live ammunition and low reliability with traditional, quote, ba- ball. Well, yeah, just ball ammo. So if you're going to use ball ammo in this, uh, you, you're going to have some some issues. So how does these it eject? Were, how does it eject ammo? Not if sure. You're not racking the slide. Not not a clue. Not a clue. What the I don't hell? know. It's a. I, I don't. I. I it, it, it's fitting that Six Sauer is a German company with all the stuff that the German military has gone through recently. You know. You know what? Like, they should hire. They have some- six. They should hire some Chinese to engineer this gun for them. <laughs> they actually okay. should. Actually, the the Germans should sire, hire some Chinese to try to engineer their military. They have six submarines, and none of them are operational right well, now. Well, they, they crashed one a few weeks ago. The last yeah, so one now, that was operational under a training mission. They bumped it into something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. It's 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 really bad. The German military. So, yeah. So how Go many weeks buy do you think Germans. it would take the Russians to conquer Germany? You 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 predicted two months, and I think you've you've wound it down to a weekend. No, I said a week. And <laughs> no, no, you like, said two oh, weeks. Man. That's right. You said two weeks. And then I was like, okay, maybe it would take them a month or two. <laughs> take them and a month or two. And then I started reading about their. Level oh, that's right. You said two weeks, and I was like, come on, that's ridiculous. And you're like, okay, a, a month or two. And I still thought that was ridiculous. But now I think that – and and have, I don't know if you've ever gen- seen – That was generous. Have you ever seen the picture? You have all these uh, defense ministers for Europe. You have the German defense minister, the French defense minister. Now, it's not that they're all women. That in and of itself doesn't mean anything. It's that all the women look like housewives. Man Their enough. defense ministers all look like housewives. Like Drinking they're petite together. and they're just Drinking. genteel. And then you see I'm the sorry. Russian foreign minister. Wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is something wrong with them being women. Because these <clears throat> women have never seen combat. The, well, the Russian minister has seen combat. He's been in the front line. He's gotten shot at. These women, will you say, look like housewives? Um, they are. Say, That's the thing. They are. Being they're, housewives they're... Would, would take more talent and more ability than what these women do. They're fucking lawyers and politicians. Sorry for the language. <laughs> I'll, ju- I'll just say this. You, you've heard the expression, the devil wears Prada and, you know, yeah. that that movie and all that you don't want to hear the defense minister wears Prada. It's no. pro- it's these, 99% chance that the defense minister is not going to make the hardcore were put decisions. in that position for political reasons and not because they were the most capable individuals to handle a situation that could break out into war. So okay. knowing that 
I'd give the Russians two days before they actually march <laughs> through all of Germany. I, I don't even think it would take that. It would be, hey, as soon as the Germans knew the Russians were serious, and now let's let's give the caveat that the Americans were saying, dude, we're not involved. The the Germans would be like, what what do you where do you want us to put your flags? <laughs> <laughs> We'll go ahead and take these things down and yeah, so, yeah whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, we're I mean, we're flying the federated flag. That's good. That's good. So let's German, go on to the German guns. Oh, you're still not done look, with this. Six Hour has made superior firearms for a very long time. Anybody who knows the brand, anybody who's been involved in firearms knows yeah, that. It's quality. But they rushed they rushed this thing out and it's a completely new design. It's completely modular. The concept, the design is pure genius. The implementation is rushed and half-assed. So if they have misfires and, and by detection, modular design, by modular, the modular design, design is genius. But could you tell our study what, audience what a modular design? Well, you just can for take some out people the entire, might not know. You can take out the entire trigger assembly with the firing mechanisms and change the body, the barrel, the magazine. You could change the uh, caliber. You can change. It is a purely modular design. It is genius. And the, the firearm distinction stays with the trigger assembly. And so that is the gun. So you can, if you break the body of the gun, you pull out the trigger assembly and you put it into a new body. If you want to change the caliber, you can take that com those components out and change the caliber. And that's important for the military because I think there are people at the top who realize that the 9mm is subpar. And they want to possibly start to transition to something more, sp sp something more suitable for stopping a human-sized target. Which would Gotta be like go 762 by 25, baby! Get that kami go round. The, it would never go with the kami round, although it is a superior. I should. I should. It is superior. I mean, but, I'd pick that over a nine any day. Without question. But there are better rounds than that. The 357 SIG, the 10 millimeter, the 40 cal, those things really uh, perform very well. The, the 40 cal is just infinitely superior to the 9 millimeter. And it's at the low end of the spectrum when you look at 357 SIG, 10 millimeter, and it, the 45 ACP and the 9 millimeter are outdated cartridges. There are way better oh, offerings. Alex is the saying floor. that they're Swiss. Six right. hour? Is six hour now Swiss? Okay. Well, and then, then the Alex, Alex like also engineers. said. They have to be made in the U.S. to avoid... This is Alex uh, Pesterfield. Hey, Alex. He's one of my Facebook friends. They have to be made in the U.S. to avoid import restrictions and the requirements for U.S. pistol contracts mean they need to be made here. Yeah, that, that makes it makes sense. Well, just like and the Jared, Berettas are, are made I here in a, the United States. Yeah, I missed a couple comments here. Jared says they're trying to get Americans to hurt ourselves so our guns will get taken away. <laughs> Uh, uh don chavis don uh chavis yeah, is that I, italian you would know uh if it's ejecting live rounds it has to be misfiring to force you to pull the slide that that makes sense yeah okay so, so let's i, I wanted i want to get to the seven guns ugh. don't you but let's I, get to I the like, seven guns i just love making fun of germans but but okay, Alex. I think Alex is. Are you saying they're Swiss? Because they were That's they started true. out as German. It looks like, but are they a Swiss company now? Maybe they are Sour? Swiss, which is even worse. I mean, come That's on. That's even worse. I don't know why, but. But apparently that's well, it. that's even you, worse. You think of Swiss engineering, and oh, and now Don is saying Portuguese. Okay, you people, somebody give us the definitive answer on what the heck six hour is already. Come on, man. Whatever they are, whatever they are, they're a quality gun manufacturer who like like Professor Rambo, our resident Italian gun expert, said. Uh, <laughs> got that in? Yes. Oh. And I have, to have the nickname Professor Rambo. Rambo. Yes, exactly. Professor Rambo. Rambo Just... was French. 
No, no, it's 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 Italian, John Rambo. It's Italian, John Rambo. Uh, that's uh. By the way, just in case you guys don't know what we're talking about here, you're not going to hear this, but they will. Yeah, that was Mambo Italiano, the hip hop version. <laughs> in case you joined the show late. Uh, our, my resident all day Greek, every day guy just found out that he's 52% Italian and 5% Greek. So that's, that's what's going on here. So let's get to these seven guns. Are you ready? Do you have the list I'm up ready. in front of you? No, I don't. I'm waiting for you to read it. Wow. So first, these are our, uh, seven firearms for, for concealed carrier and carry and home defense introduced at shot show and shot show just happened uh the 23rd it ended on the 26th and on las vegas happens every year it's on my bucket list someday if our show gets enough of a following maybe eventually i'll get a media card so that we can go as is daily and uh go to shot show and cover it that would be a dream so the first gun, Smith & Wesson M&P 9 Shield M2.0. So the Shield M2.0 is the newest version of the wildly popular Shield. So the, the, the reviewer here, this is A.W.R. Hawkins from Breitbart. It's actually writing this. Uh, it says the gun is noticeably refined with a strong focus given to grip improvement and trigger quality. The shield is compact and can be purchased alone or with integrated crimson trace laser. Well, that's interesting. Affixed to the front of the pistol, pistol, and the and it the the retail is uh, four hundred eighty bucks. Got a comment on that? Aren't these the guys that sold out to the Clintons? Sorry, I can't get over that. <laughs> Next gun. Okay, we're gonna pass over uh, Clinton Shield. <laughs> This is probably the gun that the Turk Reich is using. Okay, so Walter, Walter, sorry, Walter, Walter PPSM2. The PPSM2 is chambered in 9mm and can be purchased alone or also a crimson trace laser affixed. And this is 490 to 510 bucks. What do you know about this gun? Gave you this list a long time ago. You got to got something on it. Walther makes good stuff. You can't go wrong. Triggers and you outstanding. Got, and you got the Crimson Trace laser affixed. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's all. Yeah. Well, that's good home defense, right? It is. You know, it you is. just it's point and gimmick. click, so to speak. It's, yes. <laughs> We're going to get to another Clinton gun. Are you ready? Should oh. I just skip over it? Go ahead. It's just the 40. It's the 40 shield, so it's just chambered in 40. It's a 40 the same clip. gun chambered in 40. Okay. Uh, then we get the Sig Sauer P365. So the P365 brings a stronger advantage over compacts of similar size and that it holds 10 in... Ooh, that's interesting. I wonder... I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a picture. I wonder what's that look like. How big is that? 10 rounds. So 10 plus 1. And it's and a small gun. It's a small gun? Yeah. It's very... Uh, is it a carryable. double stack, I'm assuming? What's that? Is it a double stack? Oh, uh, that I'm not sure. I'm going to go and let's know. find out. P36. Wait. Wait. I'm going to it. 11 rounds. Micro compact everyday carry plus 10 plus. I can't tell if it's. It looks like single stack, actually. I can't tell for sure, but it has to it do with like. which magazine you're using because they come. It comes with three different magazines. Yep, it does. So, so you can use a small magazine um, if they were smart because they named it the 365, I believe, because you can carry it 365. It's small I, enough I'm, and easy to carry. I'm actually interested in checking it out. I don't know if I. I don't know. If, well, this is nine mil, right? So. Right. I don't know. If Outdated a, cartridge. You know, it is a good carry round. If 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 you feel like you're you're not going to be facing a war zone, it's a good carry round for most situations. If you feel like you're going to be facing 
multiple attackers. Yeah, it's probably not great, but Dude, but in most situations, at nine brick, mil at close range is is fine. Dude, if there's a guy coming at you with a brick, nine millimeter will do the job. If, if there's a guy sh- coming at you with a three eighty, nine mil will do the job, or another nine mil, or a forty. Maybe not at ten. It will get the job done. But there's cartridges out there that are way better. That's all I'm saying. But say. it's 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 compact. You get, you know, it's 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 it's, it's, I mean, the, it's same the old. Argument that, it's the same, same old target. argument we're gonna have forever. So let's get to the next gun, North American Arms Guardian. So the North American Arms Guardian has been around for nearly twenty years, but the Guardian one can you? I don't know what the heck this is. This is their writing, but the Guardian one can buy today has options. I, I'm assuming he meant the Guardian one, one buy today. that you can buy today yeah. has options that were not available for the Guardian that premiered in 2001. So it's a true pocket pistol chambered in 380. Uh, next. I don't want to talk about 380s, do you? Nope. Anybody out nope. there want to actually talk about 380s? If you... If you want to talk about 380, let me know. Oh, well, you know, you know what? You know what's happening here? I get comments, I don't see anything, and then all of a sudden, boom, I see a whole bunch of comments. So, oh, I apologize boy. that I'm missing uh some of the comments here. So, oh, Alex said this is about 6 hour. It was originally a Swiss company, then the company changed hands and were made in Germany. After that, they moved to the US. It's a strange history. The original company changed their name, and it's still in Switzerland. Ah. And uh, Don says of the Walter, great dependability. Yeah, that, that, is, that is absolutely true. And Alex says that's what I carry and capacity is nice. Uh, Alex, are you talking about the six hour? Which one are you talking about? And Don, he still likes his Taurus 40 millennial. You know, I wish I had a 40. I really do. I I I would be carrying a forty. If, Look, the forty cal is the minimal cartridge for combat. If you I feel me. good with a forty. I feel yeah, good four, with the yeah. forty. Although actually, uh, my buddy Mitch isn't watching right now. It's a shame because he has he has the Tokarov, and that's what I want. I want to carry the Tokarov. I want to carry that seven six two by two five, and I'll be like, dude, I'm good. And that's the Look, best of both worlds. It's a small day, cartridge, but it's so fast. It'll knock the you day down. somebody makes a double stack Tokarov, even if it's like in a CZ seventy five variant, oh god! Oh my god! I don't care oh. if it was two thousand dollars, which oh, I can't gosh. afford. I, I'd save I, up to get that. But I would. There's something s- about that cartridge. Yeah. I would literally sell your Greek heritage. Oh, I can't. I can't do yeah, that. Well, there's five percent. You can do that. <laughs> I wouldn't get you very much. <laughs> that, that wouldn't get me very much. That's our, our let's what's our last one here? Okay, we got the Mossberg 590M. Interesting. It's a new shotgun. Uh, from a distance, it simply looks like a 12 gauge Mossberg pump, but up close, one realizes the magazine tube is inert. Okay, I don't quite right. get what that means. What's that mean? That means that you're not putting cartridges into the magazine tube. It's inert. There's no spring in there. It's plugged up. The magazine tube. So it's under the so barrel. It's, so it's, it's got magazine. It, oh, that's right. Oh, yes. For okay, uh, inert action. as in inactive. So, right. oh yes, I've seen this. Oh, the Mossberg 590. Yes, yes. And it has Whoa, a double look stack at this. magazine. Five, ten, up. fifteen, or twenty round capacity. You get a 20 round mag and you have another 20 round mag standing by. You're good to go. <laughs> you're good well, to go. Listen, if you're All your home buckshot, defense needs have been met. You're done. Look, if you're shooting buckshot, you're, you're shooting nine 32 caliber projectiles with one trigger pull. So it's like a machine gun in terms yeah, of rate of actually fire. Actually, faster because yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's rate of fire gun. is nine instant um, yeah instant nine instant <laughs> nine instant it's so, a nine instant rate of fire <laughs> but with the magazine coming off of it 
uh, and having a box magazine that's fed underneath uh, is sick because I'm going to tell you what the next development is going to be. Right now, they're making these in pump action. Oh, yeah. It's Sammy's coming. Take, it's probably going to take them a year, maybe two, and they're going to introduce, what's it, the 930 SPX with the box magazine, and everyone's going to want one of those. I'm s I, I'm not w wasting my time with the pump action. I'm waiting for a semi-auto in this. And, dude, it... Yeah, cleaning Alex thing, said I, that Mossberg sounds amazing. It, 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 YouTube it. Right. It's, well, it's a beautiful here's the thing. thing. Here's the thing. A couple of years ago, a company came out and made a conversion kit that uh, they would install underneath your Remington and... Uh, make it a box fed magazine pump shotgun and Remington started incorporating that they introduced a model earlier this year, I believe, or late last year. And now Mossberg came out with something a little different. The way it functions is a little different, but when you look at it, it's pretty sick. I mean, even the yeah. 10 round magazine is like five to the average shotgun holds five to eight rounds. So on the high end, this is this is holding um, two rounds more. But here's the important part, and this is a very important part. The size, the length of the barrel depended on how much ammunition you wanted to carry. So if you wanted a shotgun that carried eight rounds, the tubular magazine under the barrel had to be pretty long which meant that your barrel had to be very long so now you can you shorten can, that barrel you can shorten the barrel now and, now here's a question i have when when you have a pump action shotgun uh i know you don't want to leave one in the chamber because if you bump that thing that thing can go off it doesn't so the have question the is with this configuration can you have one in the chamber, or would it still be the same? It's the same. It's the same. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you you you'll have to rack the slide the first time when you hear yeah. the big noise that wakes you up. If you want to store it that way, um, that's fine. But you don't have to store it that way. It depends on what you believe and how you want this thing to function for you. The nice thing is, if if you have box magazines, you can easily replace a box magazine if the spring goes bad or it gets soft. In a tubular magazine, uh, the, the, the traditional method, if you loaded it up completely, you can compress that spring so it doesn't feed well. And, and that's a problem if you're going to store it completely full. See, that's the other thing here. You can have multiple Yeah, magazines. that's true too, right. This thing, you can have multiple magazines loaded up. And if one For fails, different configurations, for correct, different situations. But, but here's the thing. Let's say one of your magazine fails. If your tube magazine fails, you're screwed. You're, you're bummed. You don't have a second option, correct. If your box magazine fails, you drop it and put in another one. That, that's, this is a huge advantage to home defense. That yeah, this, I, this configuration, what the hell took so long for someone to figure out that, hey, we could put box magazines on these things? I mean, come on. I want to figure out how much this puppy costs. There's so many imagine. guns I want to get right now, but okay, let's see if I can get the... We are definitely in a firearms renaissance where there's so much good stuff coming out. It really like is. It's, There's. It's almost better to wait another year and see what comes out, because every year there's something. Oh my God! I why didn't are realize. you? Why are you even saying this to me right now? It's like. Because. It's like you hate me. Seriously. Look, it's look. I found I found a tubular magazine that fits, in in repl uh, replaces your tubular magazine for the Mossberg. Carries 18 rounds in the tubular magazine. And I was like, this is sick. I got to get one of these. Now I'm like, but then you get a 20 wait, round wait. magazine. A here. detachable. That's the end of box that. Magazine, a double stack detachable. And you're like, wait a minute. 
if I wait another year, they're going to come out with a semi-auto. Just be patient. Just be yeah, patient. But, but but you could keep saying that, and then you just keep waiting another year. It's like, you know, you know, if you buy a computer in a year, it's going to be outdated. So what do you just keep waiting? Because it's, yeah. it's always going to be like that. Then you never get a new computer. It, you see how that works? And they're like 30 years later, you're like, just wait another year. And It'll then the next better. year, just wait another It'll year. Dad, Dad, look, look, they got lasers now. Just wait another year. So you're going to stick with that 50-year-old pump-action shock gun? Yeah, I waste all my money. Just wait another year. They got lasers now. Like Next year, they're going to have like magnetic vacuum beams. Just wait. That'll be you. I think I think we're done with this segment. I actually think we're done. I think so. With this yeah, the segment. laser thing pretty much kicked it for me. Yeah, pretty much. So of all the things that, that we reviewed here, I would have to say I'm all about that that five ninety. That's that's the most that's the most newest, awesomest. Oh actually we didn't even get to the the Utah's UTS fifteen semi automatic. And that is, it's a 15-round capacity pump shotgun. Uh, has tubular magazines fitted and all set above the barrel, each holding seven rounds. Oh, I don't like that. I don't. Oh, uh, where it rotates. Yeah, I don't. The magazines I don't. rotate. I mean, it looks cool, but yeah, I don't, I don't want to deal with that. That's just more moving parts that can go wrong. I don't want that. So uh, I tell you what we're going to do. We are... We're not going to go to our last break because we only got about seven minutes or so left. So we're just going to we're going to get to our last segment right now. I'm not even going to play the bump for it. I'm just going to go right to. Why don't know? Why don't we go to preparing your pantry for SHTF? I was going to. We were going to do a little segment where we were going to laugh at people preparing for a nuclear blast, but. Why don't we just go to the pantry because that's probably a little bit more practical. Are you ready? ready? You 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 utilize a pantry strategy, so this is kind of up your alley, right? You got a pantry strategy working there, right? I do. You do. Italian pantry strategy, right? Actually thought it was Greek. More, Turned out to this, be Italian. No, this is actually more <laughs> Greek. Um, okay. So I I <clears throat> as a kid, I grew up on a farm. And so first in, first out was the rule. So if a can of beans came in three weeks ago and it was the first can of beans to come in, that's the first one you use up. So when you build up a pantry, it's a move. It's, it's a moving living thing. It's not it's static just because you, make all you can all these beans and you can all these peaches and you get all this food ready that doesn't mean you just leave it there and wait for armageddon to show up no 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 you use the stuff so if you're canning tomatoes like my mom used to do my mom used to make me travel the countryside in my volkswagen golf and we'd sh we'd show up home with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds in my little volkswagen of tomato crates, tomatoes in crates from all over the countryside in Connecticut of all places. We'd go to all the road stands and farms and she'd pick out the tomatoes she liked. It was an all day affair. She'd bring them home and she'd can them and she'd make tomato paste. And this is the stuff we used all year long. And I remember finding jars that we had canned years ago and they were still good. But the, the strategy isn't to to create a whole bulk of food somewhere and just leave it there. You're creating this huge bulk of food that's a reservoir that you add to and take away from on a daily basis. So it's an ongoing process. If you if you don't do that, eventually you're going to throw all that food away because it's going to go bad, no matter how well you preserve it food goes bad That's yeah so yeah you so you, you you have to have a strategy for as you get new food you got to know you're putting it in a new food section i mean 
I don't know how you do it, but I would assume that, I mean, it'd be great if you had like a downstairs setup, like a basement setup where you had shelving and you can access either side. And so the one side, before you get the new food, you're taking up the food that you're going to actually use. So then you get the new food and you push the, the, the older food, but not the food you're going to use. You push that to the, the ready position to be used. And then the new food goes in and then you just keep pushing well, them. The, the, the system I like is to have open air shelves. So you load the shelf yeah. in the back, you That's pull from about. the front. Yes. So you're constantly rotating your stock. So all new materials go in through the back. All uh, older inventory comes off the front. So imagine um, then that you would, you like you you you'd probably take food up to be consumed. Correct. And then you have the space, and then you you bring in the new. Start food. loading it up. Yeah. Correct. But the other thing that's important is raw materials like sugar. In shit hit the fan situations, sugar, coffee, salt is worth its weight in gold. Oh yeah, salt. So, yep. in, in salt is a preserver. It's a, it's a lot of it's things. It's everything. Yeah. It's a lot yeah. of things. It's life. Without salt, you don't live. So, you get a fifty Unless pound you're bag. Bacon. Of, correct. You get a fifty pound bag of salt, and you put it in an airtight, uh, sealed. Uh, container and you use it and you know that it's good not that salt goes bad but it can it can be contaminated with fecal droppings from mice and such uh, yeah you don't it, want that you, it can be and you can have uh, your toilet overflow and it's spilling all over your food in the basement you know from the upstairs there's a lot of things that can go wrong so everything needs to be sealed in a way that's going to protect your hygiene and your and your uh, your health. Don says, "I will just raid my ra neighbors till I get what I need. Stockpiling ammo, not food. What if your neighbor is stockpiling food and, and ammo? ammo? Yeah, <laughs> then you you might be surprised. The raiding and of the neighbor might not be so. Yeah, that's might might not be as easy as you think." Yeah, considering most of your neighbors are going to be creating pantries and having stockpiles of firearms. Oh, uh, I bet you, you there's. I one, bet. You, I bet you there's plenty of neighbors that are stockpiling pantries and not ammo. Well, yeah, but and they probably have neighbor, little signs out. This is a gun-free zone. Oh, good to when know. When that neighbor shares with his gun-toting neighbor that he was robbed, the gun-toting neighbor is going to say, "You got what?" Laughs and laughs. Yeah, and then he's gonna again. talk. He's gonna talk to his buddies, and they're gonna show up. And you may be stockpiling ammo, but when they burn your house down with you in it, good luck shooting them. It's not good. It's not a no. good scenario for you, Don. You, I'm just you saying, don't Don. Wanna, you, you don't want to be the guy that everybody hates. You want to be the guy that everybody loves. So you're the guy who's letting his neighbors use the generator to charge up his phones. You're the guy who's letting your neighbors take water out of your swimming pool to go boil to cook food with. You're the guy who has the TV antenna on top of his house and can catch some news uh, coming through the local channels uh, that everyone's coming to your house uh, to and rely, is relying on your kindness. And everyone wants to make sure that you are safe and protected because they're relying on you. Do you hear you that, Don? You don't want to be the douchebag that everyone, every time you drive down the street, everyone's like, I hate that guy. I wish somebody would shoot him. And you know what? Someday, sooner than you think, if you're being douchebaggy like that and robbing people, it might be me. Because I ain't going to wait for the police to show up. <laughs> yeah, Alex, Alex said I'm doing both. Yes, exactly. And Don says he lives in Alabama. There are no gun-free zones. <laughs> That's right. And then Alex added, be a nice guy. Yes, that's it. Be a nice guy. Be a nice guy, but be, be a, nice a guy. cautious guy. Yeah, be a nice guy, but don't take shit. Be yeah, a nice exactly. guy, and when the guy starts trying to push through your front door, you don't wait and ask, hey, are you here to push through my front door to help me? No, you just put <laughs> a bullet through his skull, and you sort yeah. it out later. You're not going to wait. Yeah. Actually, I would just step back and say, get him, boys. 
Hit them, boys. Oh, yeah, that's that's another element. We've talked about that before, about dogs, how important they are. It's funny because... SHTF. I I watched a video recently, well, not that recently, about uh, uh, sheepdogs that are being used for... um, for field work with the police and the military and they're doing demonstrations where these dogs are attacking guys in suits and i made the comment the flip it comment like these little dogs bitch up real quick when you hit them that they don't make good guard and protection dogs and oh my god the reactions i'm still getting reactions months later (laughs) to this I am getting hammered. How dare you say that? You've never worked with this breed. You don't know what you're talking about. You this that, dude. Any dog in a no shit situation is an asset. So even if you have a sheep dog, it's going to alert you. And if the guy's coming in the house, it will make him hesitate. But if the guy's not afraid of dogs, and the dog charges and tries to bite him, and he kicks it in the head, it's going to run away. A Rottweiler is just going to get pissed off. An Akita well, thank- is going to get pissed off. A pit bull, when it sees its its master being manhandled, is going to get pissed off. And when these breeds get pissed off and angry, they do serious damage. So they I've make got good a pity protection. buddy. I've yeah, got a pity make, buddy. They make good protection and guard dogs. The malls, shepherds, they make good field dogs and mediocre at best guard and protection dogs because they bitch up easily. They weren't bred to fight men in battle. Like mm-hmm. name any any of these any of the flock guardians, the the Central Asian shepherds, the the German shepherds. Caucasian shepherds, the Gompers, the Okay. Uh, th- there's okay. so many. We're, 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 we're about out of time here. So prepping is a multidisciplinary. Yeah, it is. Uh, behavior where you don't, the likelihood of nuclear fallout happening is pretty damn low. The likelihood yeah. of a tornado going through your neighborhood. Much higher, is, much higher. It's much higher, but still pretty damn low. If we had, if that tornado goes through your neighborhood, you want to be the guy where all your neighbors show up to your house because you got the generator and you're feeding people because those people they're going to look after you. Correct. You're going to look after them and you're they're going to look after you. And when they see that guy uh, in your front yard trying to shoot you from their bedroom window, they're going to take his ass out. That's my philosophy. You want more friends, not enemies. And whether it's geopolitics, you want friends and not enemies, or per your interpersonal relationships, being a good and decent human being has its benefits. Yes. And as Italian, you know all about being nice to people. So that makes sense. I, do. I would right. like to say, uh, make a statement in Italian to Go Paul ahead. here. Go ahead. Adiramisu. Wait, hold on. Let me let me translate this for you. Hold on, hold on. Ready? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Translate it. You gotta send me this. I can't. I don't know what you're doing. Other than looking- <laughs> on that note, we're gonna wrap this show up. I thank everybody who has joined us here, especially the folks that commented and shared. I want to thank Bodhi for letting me know that you were echoing. Uh, uh, Appreciate that, Mr. Bodes. I fixed it. I fixed your echo. It's fine. I fixed it a long, long time ago. And I'll be back on my personal Facebook page with headlines that you may have missed at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you can check out all of the archives for the Is Daily shows, Monday through Thursday shows. You can check those out 
at isdaily.live. If you go to isdaily.live, it'll take you right to the page that has all the shows on it, including this this latest show. Once, once I get everything posted for it, which probably later tonight I'll get everything posted for it. Tomorrow night, it's Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora, and we will be talking. Well, we're going to be talking about some Lozillas. We're going to be talking about some ridiculous, weird stories. Uh, we've got some some science news for you, and uh, we're going to be pondering the usefulness of science. That's our Ooh. I Ponder segment that we're going to oh. talk about tomorrow. It's going to be very, very entertaining Is show. Is like global warming science that you're going to be pondering? No, just just the, the tendency okay. of folks to kind of get into a, a worshipful, non-critical mode when everyone, anyone says, it's science, it's settled. Well, it's not really how science works. But you'll have to wait till tomorrow to hear exactly what we have to say. Bodhi will say something like, S -S don't trust science. He'll say that. It, it won't be like what it sounds, but he'll start something like that just to be provocative. <laughs> So anyway, you'll have to wait till tomorrow for that. And and again, tomorrow afternoon, is uh, headlines you may have missed, I'll also be using. And thank you, uh, Professor Rambo, for being on this daily Monday today. And thank you, by the way. Thank you for giving me this day. This has been one of the best. Actually, I'm going to say for 2018, so far, this is the best day of the year. The best day. When you called me up and you said 5% Greek, I was like, whoa, this is the best news ever. And your wife, I heard her in the background. She was saying, I feel dirty. So. <laughs> 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 That's pretty awesome. All right. So, uh, do you have any last notes for for our studio audience as as we leave I'd like here? To say, with all the love and affection that comes with this, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to repeat what that says. So, I'm going to play us out with a song, and uh, then I'll I'll say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. We'll. We'll see you on his daily Monday next week with Professor Rambo. Travas to calor. like a crazy rumble, rumble 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 like a crazy rumble,